And good evening once again, fans. You're listening to the Death Metal Podcast. They're more than welcome to come on too anytime they want to come on. Oh man, those girls pop good like Alright. It's a bunch of things. Let's see what he's up to. Thank you, man, and thank you for giving me the time. Tune in right now. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone. Hey, round two, folks. This was a test. You know what? We had little little difficulties on the technical sides of uh, podcasting, but you know what? Naked. We're back so on my the My name is El Ridiculoso, and for the past 20 minutes, me and this guy have been talking to ourselves. So hi, everybody. Follow me on yeah. Facebook. Follow me on the Twitter, the Instagram. Buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com and follow Opportunity. Ah, <sighs> okay. So anyway, how are you again? Well, I think we went through all this. <laughs> Fast forward through all this again. We go, go slow motion. So anyway, man, you got some shows coming up? I do. I do. First off, how are you, stranger that I'm just meeting for the first time that we have never talked before? We did not just spend 17 to 20 minutes Getting to know each other pretty much. Getting to know you. Oh, sorry. But anyway, okay. as we were saying before about possibly going out to where you're located and making the professional wrestling, uh, I'm available if anybody is looking for me. You know, little GMB, mm. little uh, uh, FMO, little inside terms of uh, get me booked and fly me out. You know what I'm saying? We got Yes, this. so shout out. Yeah. So Matt Tremont, uh, uh, Loudy, if you're listening from On Point, um, and Stan Styles, if you're listening for the intergenitor demands of six, you know what? We're always looking for opportunities. Every- Opportunity. Follow the rules. Yeah. Follow the rules. Got it. Got you. Got you. Anyway, show's coming up. You know, yeah. it's great. if you're in and around the Michigan area, even if you're not, you got some free time, you probably do. You might still be quarantined. You ain't going back to work yet because unemployment's awesome right now. So, 4th of July, come on I out can't... to Bay City. See El Ridiculoso representing the UCW Ultimate Championship Wrestling and try and get some revenge for a championship that was stolen from me. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I know I'm going to be there. I know I'm going to make some fighting happen, and I got this. And good barbecue, too, I heard. Ooh. Uh, I believe so. I believe there will be treats and delectables. Barbecue. You know, barbecue. Barbecue. And electrical. Fly. Flying fireworks. Sparks will be flying. Who knows? It, it, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they're allowing that in my state right now. But, uh, you know, get here quick because there can only be a hundred of you. And you better stay six feet apart. Otherwise, uh, you know, you die. And death isn't cool. But you know what is cool? Professional wrestling. And El Ridiculoso going live on Facebook and not just talking to each other for a while. Exactly. Exactly, fans. So, you know what? He's been, we, before we had a little conversation, and he was telling me that he's been in the business now about 11 years. So. 11 years. Started in 2009 in the beautiful sunshine state of uh, Southern California. Uh, big hello to everybody out there. You know, my friends, my family. Um, not Joey Ryan. We don't talk about him. He's a bad person. He did bad things. We all know he did it. We all didn't do anything about it. But hi, everybody. And I'm sorry. And uh, uh, hi, SoCal. Hi, hi, SoCal. You're not watching because you forgot about me. And that's cool. I'm in Detroit now making things happen. Win the championship belts. Part of War Inc. Being opportunistic and saying that I got this because I follow the rules. And if you did such a thing yourself, you'd be successful. Come see me wrestle. Ha! There you go, fans. You heard it right here just now. But anyway, yeah, what else is going on besides that? The quarantine, 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 getting puffed up, getting, getting, what, what, what's your regimen? What's your, what, what have you been doing? Uh, I do a lot of push ups, sit ups, and squats. That's uh, pretty much what I've been doing. I have a uh, nine month old daughter, and uh, she's very active. She has a, uh, uh, she's growing, she's walking, she's starting to talk. She's an uh, amazing uh, highlight of my life, my female reboot. Um, she is uh, great. That keeps me in good shape because I follow her around and I pick her up and I throw her in the sky and I catch her because she's awesome. There you go. Enjoy it, you know. It's like me. I enjoy my nephews and nieces, but now they're like Andre the Giants, you know. They're just growing so fast. It's amazing. You know, in all honesty, if we can break the fourth wall right now, I know that the quarantine sucked for a lot of people. It's been really bad and really bad things have happened. And my heart goes out to everybody who's been affected by the uh, the worst thing to happen in, like, you know, the last seven months because the whole world's been shit lately. But um, 
I can't I, I can't complain about it because uh, uh, I got to spend three months most like influential months in my opinion like mm -hmm. when quarantine started my daughter was wasn't even crawling and, and now she's up she says dadas she says mamas she says babas she has eight teeth she looks like a jack-o-lantern in the mouth she <laughs> walks she, she takes at least four steps at a time and I would have never gotten to see any of those great moments had I been at work so I mean it ain't bad it ain't good but it ain't all bad mm-hmm and you just said to me before that stores are starting to open up slowly but surely. Uh, yeah, out here, out here, people are risking life and limb just to go to the bar. And amazing enough, the uh, the sickness rate is going up. So you know, wash your hands. It ain't hard. I mean, it takes thirty seconds, and in that yeah. thirty seconds, I, what's going to change? Wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Wear a mask. It ain't hard to do. No, no. So don't who are? Uh... Don't make door handles in public places. I mean. I did that before. So I mean, who? I've never done that. That'd be weird. <laughs> anyway, what were you talking about? I said, who? Who did you grow up watching? What f kind of wrestling did you influence you as a kid growing up? Uh, I moved around a lot growing up. Right? We uh, we lived all over. I've lived in uh, Nebraska, lived in Kansas, lived in Michigan, lived in California. We moved around a lot. That's you know, it's, it's cool. Uh, wrestling's kind of always been there. My always like my my thing that I watch. Uh, I'd say growing up. Um, I was a big one, two, three kid fan, as anybody my size probably is. Uh, mm -hmm. I was very appreciative of Mr. Perfect, and uh, and honestly, the Road Dog, the Road Dog was a cool dude in my opinion, man. And as time got older, I'd say Christian was in that list. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. You know, and then it can go indie indie people, but indie people are indie know, people. I know we know them all. I know it's like yeah, okay. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying like like I don't know. I'm not. It's it's those are the people I really watched. That was the mm -hmm. type of wrestling I really was into. I was into more storytelling than than barbed wire massacres. I was in, you know, I, 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 that was just my thing. I like technical wrestling. I like tag team wrestling. But not only, you know what? Tonight's actually, actually, tonight's, today actually is Terry Funk's birthday. So happy yes. birthday, Terry yes. Funk. Terry Funk, greatest professional wrestler no. ever, man. Storytelling, storytelling, man. Watch Terry Funk matches. Watch yeah. Terry Funk versus Ric Flair. We're gonna do oh, that today. Let's give some. Let's give some match advice to watch, and uh, any Terry Funk versus Ric Flair match, any Terry Funk versus Ric Flair promo, or Terry Funk in the empty arena promo where he's challenging Jerry Lawler, and that's amazing. That's a good promo. Watch that mm -hmm. one. Also versus Abdul. Yeah. yeah. And Cactus. And Cactus. Can't, can't forget the old Mick Foley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great promos too. Great promos too. Mm -hmm. ECW era, you know, as I'm representing right now, ECW, yo, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm representing everyone's favorite professional wrestler, uh, myself, El Ridiculoso. You can get a t shirt like this at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash El Ridiculoso. There's like seven or eight designs. I came up with all of them. Some people help me with them because they're better at digital animation than I am. So, you know, go, come support a good cause, which is me feeding my family. Well, this just came out, and you'll get one of these. Ooh. Yeah, it is merch too. Let's you know, I got great merch. I got replica masks. I got I got a, a little tiny wrestle buddy keychains. I got stickers. I got hand drawn animation coloring books. I got anything you want. I got all that you need. I got this. And if you're looking for it, opportunity. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, gotta have that merch. Support. Buy it, everyone. Buy, buy, buy. Support. If you can't, find, if you're looking for something that's not on prowrestlingtees.com forward slash El Ridiculoso, you can always call, uh, uh, message me on Facebook, El Ridiculoso, uh, Twitter, uh, at Re El Ridiculoso, like real, but it's Re El Ridiculoso, and then uh, on Instagram with uh, El Ridiculoso. Imagine that. Those names were open and available. I, w I thought it would be weird too, but no. Hey, you know, name's out there. Your name is there. If you go back in time, who was your favorite match that you would have your favorite wrestler you wrestled? My my the matches I've had, my personal favorite matches. Um I've mm. had personal favorite moments in matches, which I, I think I mean overall matches are great. And yeah. I've been great with a lot of great, great, great people. Um and I can't I don't want to sell anybody short because they're all really, really good. And yes. all the matches that I had and I've had, I can, you know, it's because of the other person really. So um I don't want to give anybody a disservice by saying anything's 
better than the other. Some of my favorite moments, though, was uh, in, like, 2011, I was in a match against TJ Perkins where he used my body to knock himself out. Mm. And, uh, he then proceeded to hit me with a shooting star press while he was unconscious. And that was a cool moment because I didn't die. And that's cool. Um, mm. Other other cool things have happened along the way. I, I, I won the lightweight championship in Kobo Hall mm. for XICW. I don't remember that. That's a great moment I'll never forget. That was a big, big thing for me because I'm not from... Uh, I didn't start wrestling in Detroit originally. Mm -hmm. I had to come out here and kind of just restart everything I'd done after six years. And that was yeah. like a culmination of like a two-year thing trying to get just, well, respected in a word. Because mm -hmm. people hear my name and they just kind of chuckle themselves and laugh at me and then think I can't wrestle. And then I beat them because I can wrestle and you're dumb for thinking that I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, other, other cool moments are uh, forming a tag team with my good friend Biggie Biggs in Southern California, as ridiculously big. Mm -hmm. uh, forming a tag team with my good friend Mavado, Mysterious Mavado, here in Detroit as the Party Monsters. Uh, I, I, I've been in cool groups with uh, the guys in War Inc., my Horse Party Horseman guys. I've had some cool times. I got to wrestle on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood for like four years. That was coolness. Uh, I got to wrestle for Hood Slam in Oakland, California, which is fucking Paradise Island for professional wrestling. And I love that place. And more places need to be like that place. Uh, uh, you know, I've gotten to do a lot of cool things. Got to meet a lot of cool people. I trained under Brian Kendrick for two years. That was awesome. Very educational. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hashtag Kendrick's kids. <laughs> um, you know, I've got to do cool things and meet cool people, man. I can't complain. Stories I wouldn't have to tell otherwise. Uh, training at the House of Truth under Truth Martini. That's a learning tree that anybody should be lucky to benefit from. Uh, you know, it's can't. It, it's, you know it's what? A, that guy's name. Yeah, I mean, I know. I've heard that name before from Ring of Honor in the past. I used to see him at a lot of a lot of a lot of events with Larry Sweeney, the one and only Sweet and Sour baby. Oh, man, man, it was fun dude to watch. Sweet and Sour Inc. He did uh, a couple of questionable things that don't age too well, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It might have been canceled in current uh, current culture, given some of the uh, angles they did back in day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got I got to see truth when he was like the truth, you know. Yeah, yeah. With the abs, bro. And the book, the truth. <laughs> uh, I gotta get. I gotta, I gotta reach out to him. Hmm. Uh, he's good, man. He, you know, running the house of truth. His training school, John mm -hmm. uh, Mavado. There every day. Hi, Mavado. I don't know if you're watching this, but hi, buddy. We hung out earlier today. We wrestled in in the ring at that school because mm -hmm. that's what I thought we were would do inside of it. I mean, we were just gonna play hokey pokey in a pack of cards, but uh, I said, let's wrestle, bro. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I've got to know uh, Cheeseburger pretty well lately from Ring of Honor. He's cool. Well, I haven't met him. I haven't met him yet, but I would let that. I feel like that we would get along, you know. Now he's well. He's the actually he's the school the owner now of the school, uh, of the, the ring of, the ring of honor dojo. Cool. Well, maybe I will get to know him soon. Pennsylvania, there, Pennsylvania. I think uh, Bristol, I believe Bristol. Uh, so maybe, him, maybe one day. Maybe one he's day. The trainer, he's the trainer. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Somai Suki. Somai. Yeah, Somai. Um, Stella Gray, I think her name is. A couple people popping in and out, too. So they're doing their thing. Cool. You know, which is cool. Him and uh, another guy, LSG, from Ring of Honor. You know him pretty. Awesome, awesome. He couldn't be my ride this weekend to the show, so it'd be kind of cool to talk with him a little bit more looking forward to that yeah. Yeah. you know there's lots of wrestling you know like you said there's that was great man right even right even though right now the world's on pause professional wrestling was like yeah, no yeah. Mm. do you like the AEW? do you like WWE? what's your uh, i have a in lot between? of friends in AEW, the people that started the company uh, i do too yeah i was gonna say i do too i know a lot of people too 
I got, I got a, a few good buddies, people I started training with in Southern California, people from my first training class are there. Mm -hmm. uh, they like to shush people. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, the guys who started it also uh, wrestled for the company I started in in Southern California in AWS. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to, I know a lot of the guys that are there. Uh, yeah. I wrestled with and against them and shared locker rooms with a good majority of those people. So hi, if you're not watching this, because... You're, you're busy. I know you're busy. They're busy. They're actually. What is it tonight? They got a show tonight, don't they? It's, what's today? After hey. dark. Today's after oh, yeah. dark. Yeah, that's, that's not live. Though, man. That's, no. I gotta try and find my charger really quick. My my device is dying. So one sec here. We'll we'll continue talking as I roam. Absolutely. The house. Pause. Uh, no, no. We don't have to pause. We can keep talking. I'm just gonna search right. for my charger. Goddamn charger! Where is it? And see, this is what happened when technical difficulties. Eh, no, my, my battery's going low. Yeah, on, it went on your iPad. Technical. On your iPad, probably. Yeah, yeah, actually, my phone died, and then this died. So. Oh, hey, there it is. I found it. We're good. Jackpot. All right. Stepping over the toys, I know. Yep, 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 yep. That's exactly how that went. <laughs> I'm scratching around the room. Uh. All right, my humble apologies. We're good to go. We're back. No, again. it's all good. All good. All right. All right. Hope, well, nobody saw, hope nobody saw your walls or anything. Okay. That's cool. You're good. Figure out the floor plan of my apartment. <laughs> mm. But uh, what, where, 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 where the hell were we? We're talking about, yeah. People, yeah, all the guys that we know and other people, you know, make it. All right, let's talk about professional wrestling, man. We, I remember, I don't know if we were live or not live when we were talking about Steamboat Flair. We're not Steamboat, it was, it was Funk Flair. Yeah, right. Funk and Flair. Funk and Flair. Ooh, that'd be yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, no, Harry Funk promo on Jerry Lawler in the empty arena. We were talking about that. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, shit. So much, people. You missed it. <laughs> you have to replay this video. After a while, no. eh, it's all right. It is all right. So this is your show, man. How long have you been doing this? How long do you think? Two weeks. Three years in the business. Three years. All right. All right. Well. All right. Well. Uh, Three my years. Name is, my name is El Ridiculoso, and uh, I'm going to be your host now. So uh, let me ask you some questions, man. In the three years, what have you learned about professional wrestling? So much. Inside and outside the business. Well, they, 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 give, give me three things. Three things. Three things. Three things. All right. Uh, well, the first thing is the uh, sneakiness behind the curtains. I know uh, a lot. Of, I don't want to say anything there, but yeah. Uh, no, yeah, but it's, it's right now. It's a it's a hotbed of bad people. And you yeah. know what? it's a great thing. Uh, let's talk about that. That's the subject we're going to go with. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the speaking out movement and how yeah. good it is for the professional wrestling industry. Because uh, really, for a very long time, people have been like, like professional wrestling has kind of been like ignored. It's like it's the bastard child of entertainment, really, right? So like people mm -hmm. don't really care, and then the people in charge, uh, they like to use people's passion against them. Yeah. Like, uh, hey man, I'm not going to pay you today. But I need you to not show up for work at your job so that you can come put my ring together for me and I'm not going to use you to wrestle. And if you don't do it, if you decide you want to go to work today, you're going to have a problem. You're not going to book. You're not going to get booked here in the future. You know, mm. stuff like that. That doesn't need to happen in professional no, wrestling. Anymore, no. right? We don't need to be showing people private genitalia pictures in private, you know. Like, and when it all happened, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm not even bothered with it. I don't care about it. I'm just no one it. wants to see you fingering your yeah. butthole, Sway Thompson. So don't be sending pictures like that out to people. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad that these people are getting called out because mm. it should have happened 10 years ago. It should not It should have happened. It should never have happened, really, honestly. But yeah. Business, business needs to change a little bit. That, we need to get the stuff out the way. That list just grows and grows. That list is growing. It's insane. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying there's not people out there taking advantage of the movement. I'm not saying. Uh, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I've actually put up rings. Yeah, so have I. So have I for a very long time. They're really heavy. That's yeah, fine though. 
You learn a lot. Yeah, you do. Um, what else? My third thing is, uh, shit. What do I got? I don't anything. Whatever. That's it. That's it. I don't. I'll think of it after a while. Watch. Brain so, uh, Here's a question. Here's a good one for you. You were asking me earlier about like favorite professional wrestlers, right? I'm gonna do you one better. Give me, give me your uh, your current favorite professional wrestler, the person you love the most, like right now. Right now. Right now it has to be. Holy shit, man! There's so many I could go. Uh, let's say. It's gonna kick my ass. Nah. Doesn't get used as much, but he should be. I'm gonna have to say. Sugar D. All right. I'll put that up there. Shout, Shout out, out to Sugar D. What up, you brother know. man? We got this. Pineapple Pete, excuse me. We got to, no, we can't, yeah, can't, Pineapple Pete. We gotta eat. Pineapple Pete, all right, brother man. He's a good guy. Good guy. He needs, but well. he's going to have his, you know, actually, I think he's facing Lance Archer this week, I believe. All right, all right. So that's your current favorite guy. Who's, like, your favorite guy when you were growing up? Your favorite, you know, I have to drop everything. I'm not eating my bowl of cereal until this match is over. Who's that guy? Ricky the Dragon. Ricky the Dragon. Ricky the Dragon, all right. All right, and now, final question. And as you said, you know, people really don't talk about him, Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect, you know, underrated guy. Underrated and guy. Paul and Orndorff. Rick Rude, man. Paul yeah. Orndorff to you name it. I could go a list of Macho Man to you name it. Well, one of my favorite things to watch is uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt Henning just sell, and then Rick Rude sell the atomic drop. If you ever have time, just search for clips of Rick Rude selling the atomic drop. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, in the, a little inside baseball on that uh, for you guys. I mean, the atomic drop is the atomic drop is a devastating move, maneuver, which should probably be illegal because it is someone's knee crushing someone's testicles. And yes. The way some people react to that is very entertaining. Rick Rude's reaction to being dropped falls first on someone's knee is very entertaining to watch. Although I feel sorry for him for having to go through that experience. Because uh, I am a professional wrestler, and I know that when that stuff like that happens, it takes the wind out of you, and it hurts. So, uh, you, you all know, right. What about tag teams? We didn't even go into tag teams. Oh, uh, man. I still have one more question, man. Oh, who's, okay. Who, who's who's the guy you watched that made you think, you know what? I'm going to start this podcast. Who was that guy? It was actually just <laughs> Joey Styles. <laughs> Joey Styles. Just the attitude of him got me to, you know. I would think of that. Joey uh, Styles. Joey right. Styles, the commentator. You know? Okay, just right. That's one of my favorite moments on WWE TV is when uh when they, they kick him off so he can go do ECW where he has that little promo with uh with Jerry Lawler. That's a that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh all right, I'm sorry. You were sick. Uh, you were asking me a question. That was my last question. I had it. That was it. Okay. Tag teams. Tag teams. Back in the day. Back in the day. Old school tag teams. Old school tag teams, uh, rockers, Greg old rockers, uh, Tolly and Arn, those, those, those guys, those, mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be my old school tag teams. And Demolition, can't go wrong with Demolition. Here comes the action, comes the smasher, walking disaster. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go with, uh, you know, the Bulldog, Dave Boy Smith, and uh, British Bulldog. And Bulldog Owen Hart were a good tag team, actually. Mm hmm. Uh, who else? Holy shit, man! I could go on listen, listen, listen. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, oh shit, earthquake and uh, the boss man. Earthquake, all right, all right, all right, all right. little twin towers. You know, mm -hmm. right. can't go wrong, can't go wrong, can't go wrong. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't go earthquake typhoon, a natural disaster. True, true. I could have gone um, Rikishi. Oh no, no, that's that was no wait, that was more current of the w yeah that was like mm, three count three count three count three count three count with uh what's his name what's his name too cool too cool or yeah chris or something yeah one of the died got you got you i understood all of that there's so many guys that died are we actually are people watching us now do we have a way to, to know that we're being viewed i don't know Type a comment. Ask us a question. Hit us up. Come on. I, I can't. 
my phone died, so I'm just watching this on a little live stream thing, so I don't know. But he'll read the question. You ask the question, he'll read it to me, and I'll respond as yeah. I would respond if you were to ask that question to me. First. And if I turn the volume down, so we don't have an echo. Echo, echo. Reverb. Three people shown. Three people now. Four people. One, two. Four, four five. full views. Five full views. Share the link, people. Life is good. Uh, let me see. Let me see what's going on. With my phone will turn on this time. Everybody see us? Hi. Hey, what up, guys? That was like an inception. It was him, me watching him do watching me. Um, let's go. F Holy shit! Let's go female wrestlers. How's that? Like, we haven't talked about it to female. Hmm. Who are your favorites growing up? Uh. Sherry Martel. I think Sherry Martel was more of the yeah. Nah, she was more of a main. No, China. Yeah, China. Yeah. Miss Jackie. Jackie was cool. That's it, really. China and yeah, her. <laughs> Nothing really. Because then. Yeah. It was Moolah. Yeah. <laughs> but they used her too much until she died. <laughs> Moolah. The fabulous one. She, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a Moolah. She, mm. I mean, she, uh, she did some bad things, though. And if you go back time, Adrian Adonis. Ah, all right, all right, all right. For the flamboyant era of wrestling. You know, that was like the real, the, the flamboyant era of wrestling, I think. He was yeah. like, he was the one that really, eh, no, Jesse the body too, but, eh, no, yeah. Oh, Rick Martel. Oh, wait a minute. Tito are we, Santana. Are we just naming names now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going by whatever. Okay, See? Okay. Keep on rolling. Keep on going. I'll pause. Uh, this is great. No one's got questions. You got questions, we got answers. Yeah. And I got this. That's the thing I say sometimes. By sometimes, I mean pretty much all the time. And uh, people chain it back to me sometimes. It's like, hey, you got this. I'm like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> oh, you got it? Yeah. Be right there. Hold on. I got it. Yep. Uh -uh. Famous last words, you know. What do you want on your tombstone? Me? Dude, I got this. Yeah, no pepperoni or sausage. <laughs> Thank you. You know. But uh, let's see here. Uh, who was I saying? Adonis? Uh, uh, who else we got? Throw some names out there. Um, El Ridiculoso. One name that stays to you forever. Forever. I'm going to forget it. You know, it's, it's me. No. Yeah, wait till your daughter starts saying it. Uh, I, I'm the dad -daz. I'm the dad -daz. They call me the dad -daz. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy. I forgot about them. Doug Dougley boys? Nah. Eh. Dougley's? The Dugleys are an amazing team. I mean, I, I think they only worked in the southern Chicago region from uh, 1986 to 1988. But the Dugleys, the Dugleys were the masters of the micro mini match. Uh, it's they're amazing. The Dugleys, the Dugleys. I mean, they did a thing in WWE sometimes. But the Dugleys, the Dugleys were the team to watch, man. Mm -hmm. You're right. Catch that next time, fans. Tune in. <laughs> No, they. Uh, I'll never forget the angle they went to uh, WWE New York with uh, the actually Trent Acid and. Uh, hey, bro, now you're just naming dead people. Come on. No, I know, I know. No, him and his partner. Yeah, they did a little thing there they, on TV. Got their fame, you know. Come on. Yeah, no, it was cool. He was cool in, G, in uh, JCW, man. It was a. He was doing the like, Christ thing. Hmm. GC, JCW. The, the Juggalo Championship Wrestling. The ICP dudes. Yeah, Juggalo. For that, that was pretty cool. I'm actually becoming good friends now with that guy, Super. <laughs> super humans. <laughs> cool dude. Real cool dude. Little Mr. TV celebrity. You know that? He's that stunt dude. Nah, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. This one goes out to the Juggalo and the Juggalo. Nah, that guy. I got, I got you, man, but I got whoop, this. Whoop. We got questions? I can't see the answers. I don't know. 
Yeah, just one person. I'm going to throw a question in here. No, kidding. I can't do that. It's my own show. What am I doing? Uh, I mean, if it's your own, you probably had the questions ready to go. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know. You know, I could have. But you know what? Just, saying, just, just random. Just, just random. Okay, we got this. We shoot from the hip. We're doing it live. Fuck it. We're doing it live. What is it? Sting goes on. Sting plays, Sting plays us out. I don't know what that means. Sting plays us out. What does that mean? I don't get it. Fuck it. We're doing it live. Just fucking fuck it. As I always say, live, baby, live. Live, baby, live. I don't know. It's my line. One only line. What about what? movies, man? What, what's, what's a favorite movie of yours? Favorite movie? Ah, man. What do you think? What do you think of my kind of... Probably see me. What kind of... What do you think? Horror to comedy, you name it. Come on. I'm going to say your favorite is uh, the forgotten Disney classic, Snow Dogs. You are incorrect. It was oh. worth it. What's that one with the... Oh, man. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Please Before work. Cuba Gooding Jr., he gets stuck on the boat with a bunch of drag queens. Uh, How about... Uh... I'll say uh, Little Shop of Horrors with uh, Rick Moranis <laughs> before he did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> classic. Hey, that's a classic one, though. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is a... Uh, yeah. That's a classic. That's a classic. It was. I remember going to... I remember, TV show, the Disney Channel TV show. I remember going to Universal and I saw the site, like, the props. It was kind of cool. Just like when, when they had actually had like the big shoe and the, the bug and it was kind of cool. Forgot about that. When they had that little exhibit there. You know what's going to be cool? This Saturday in Bay City, July 4th, El Ridiculoso. Making my long awaited post quarantine return to Bay City for UC. W, El Ridiculoso, the longest reigning champion in UCW history at 527 days. I held what everybody knows to be the ultimate in championship gold, the UCW heavyweight ultimate championship title. And I'm looking for payback. I'm looking for revenge, and I want that title back, Bryce Sullivan. Johnny Bravo, you guys screwed me out of that title, but I'm coming to screw you hard. Wait, no, that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say that I'm coming. I'm coming. Full force. And you got me mad now. So the tables have turned, and they turned in the wrong way. I got this. Or, you know what? Let's say you're busy for the July. I get it. Family happens, you know? You know? What about this? You're in the Detroit area. You're already out here because Detroit's amazing. Why wouldn't you already be here? I don't know where you're at, but get to Detroit because you can come to Pontiac, Michigan. Beautiful city of Pontiac is rich in history. Look it up. Do a little Google search. Nothing bad has ever happened in the city of Pontiac. I guarantee you that. And XI, CW, and the super secret. I can't even talk about it, but I'm telling you about it anyway. And I'm going to get fired for it, but you're going to listen to me. Barbecue bash out number two house party. El Ridiculoso. I bring the party. I am the party. And they're going to XICW fans. You know, they suck. I don't know if you guys know this about XICW fans, but they suck. So if you want to come and watch El Ridiculoso beat a Willie Watts senseless, because Billy Willie Watts, William Watts, if you don't know, is a very problematic individual. He has mental health issues, and I'm just trying to help him. He took his testicles and physically attacked my foot. I haven't been able to walk right ever since. He's attacked me personally, privately. He's a big, big, big cheater. You don't even understand. He does not follow the rules. No one in XICW follows the rules and i i get i'm I'm just sick of it really because people yell at me and people boo me or they cheer other people louder i don't get it i was the xicw lightweight champion i got screwed out of that title too and what did people do they cheered the guy who screwed me we don't cheer screwers we don't cheer cheaters my name is el ridiculoso you should have been cheering me all along because i got this i deserve it i did i want to be champion again so july 11th willie watts you, myself, I, XICW, as a whole, that whole compound, wherever we're going to be, that undisclosed location, it's going to be disclosed because I'm going to beat you, Willie. People are going to have to find you. And that people are going to be paramedics. So we can't give it in an undisclosed location. Otherwise, the ambulance will not find you, Willie. I got this. I'm dreaming of it, Willie. 
I'm dreaming. You have no idea. He's drooling. Dreams about this. He's movie. drooling. And, and just in time, that dream will come true. Believe me, Willie Watts. Just in time, that dream is going to be a reality, Willie Watts, where I beat you so bad. So, so bad. They're going to put you on another problematic list because in 2020, Willie Watts is problematic. I got this. He's fired up, fans. He I is am. fired. You know, what? you know what? Let's continue. Let's keep going on. Let's not talk about XICW, okay? All right? They're behind me. I'm not talking about them. Let's talk about GCW. Not not your deathmatch GCW. No, I'm talking about Generation Championship Wrestling. They go on tour. They're coming to Indiana. And on August 22nd and August 23rd, El Ridiculoso, I'm coming to Indiana. I'm coming to game. I'm coming to change a game in Generation Championship Wrestling. I'm yeah. coming there. I'm bringing my good, good buddy. A guy I won the Proving Ground Championship with. Myself. My good buddy. You might know him as Tyre Santine, but it is not his name. His name is Mark Ross, and I owe him a big, big Big apology. Mark, if you're watching this, if somebody's watching this that knows Mark Ross, I want you to pass this apology on from him to for, for him, from me to him. I need him to know. I was wrong. I told him one time that you know what, dude? You're not you, you don't need to be so angry. All right. I told him one time that we could just party. We could party and we could win. We could party and be successful. People want to have a good time, but I was wrong, Mark Ross. The people want to cheat. The people want to cheer cheaters. The people want people who break the rules. People want people who hit people with chairs and and use other people to distract referees. People want to cheer that. They don't want to cheer the people that follow the rules. And no one follows the rules better than El Ridiculoso because I was always taught. If you follow the rules, you keep your head up high, you do what is right and what is you feel to be the right thing to do, then you will be successful. But I was wrong. Mark Ross, and I apologize to you. And I'm going to make it up to you. We're going to go to GCW together. We're going to beat every tag team along the way. And we're going to prove my point that cheaters never win. And the only way to truly be successful, to be ridiculously successful, to see every ridiculous opportunity that comes your way, the only way to do it, Mark Ross, we have to follow the rules. We just have to follow the rules. Anyway, you were saying this is your show. I kind of took it over there for a minute. My bad. You got, you just kept that going. I, you just like keep on going. Yeah. Go. It's all I good. This. It's cool. But anyway, fans, you know what? It's nine o'clock. It's time to go to bed. How's that? I'm going to bed. I got to get up. Follow me on the Facebook, on the Twitter, at Re El Ridiculoso, on the Instagram, at El Ridiculoso. Buy the t shirts. At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash El Ridiculoso. Go to the YouTube machine. Pop me in your you googly. Say El Ridiculoso. I'm going to see some of your matches. Pop me in the machine. I'll pop up. I'm there. You'll find me. Give me some views. Make me go viral. Say El Ridiculoso. We need you in our life. Find your people. El Ridiculoso. I got this. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Wait. Oh, got right there. there. All that information. All that. We follow that. Follow the rules. Follow the rules. Follow the rules. El Ridiculoso. I would like to see El Ridiculoso. I got I got a wrong. wrong. I want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast and come back soon. Anytime. Anytime you want to come back. Anytime. Thank you for being on. And thank you, man. Have a good night. You too. I don't got any podcasts this week. So fans, I'm taking a break. Good night, everyone. Fans, that was awesome to hear from El Ridiculous Lisso. El Ridiculous Lisso. Of course, from the one and only. The one and only. Fans, thank you for listening from the podcast and have a good night. I'll be back next week. Tune into the Death Match Russell Podcast. You can find more Deathmatch Russell podcasts on the following social media. DeathmatchRussell.com. Follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32. And on Facebook, 
Facebook.com slash DJ Dave NJ32. Instagram at David NJ36. Hey, wrestling fans. I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on a, an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code Deathmatch Russell podcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Call an elbow where wrestling passion meets street fashion. Me on Podcast City Network at podcastcity.net, facebook.com slash podcast city network. Hit the like button and share. And on Twitter at podcastcitynet. You can hear Deathmatch Russell podcast on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.